Hi, this is Mauricio for cloudbackuping.com and this video is part of the definitive guide to backing up your data. In this particular video, we'll have a look at Cloudberry Backup. It allows Windows users to back up their files effortlessly to Amazon S3. Features include continuous backup, for example, and block level backup, advanced backup scheduling, data compression to reduce file size and, of course, save money, and strong data encryption, among others. So stay tuned for a more detailed review coming up next. So before we start with the actual review, let me give you a full disclosure here. Um, unlike the other reviews you find on cloudbackuping.com, I did not pay for uh, Cloudberry Backup Server Edition. This software was given to me by Cloudberry Backup um, as a courtesy, as a review copy, so I didn't pay money for it. However, this does not change my judgment of how I think the software performs or how I use the software, or how I present the software to you. I just wanted to mention that before we actually start with the actual review progress. So to speed up the progress here a little bit, I just uh, skipped the installation progress. And when you've installed Cloudberry Backup on your Windows machine, you can just right click on that little symbol and launch the software. And the use is actually pretty straightforward. You can use the wizard where uh, you're getting um, a customized backup plan to your needs. The good thing about Cloudberry Backup Server is that it's not only going to back up your files to Amazon S3, but a variety of systems, Rackspace, OpenStack, other file system, Azure, HP Cloud, and other servers that you can use to back up your files with. And you're not limited to Amazon S3. However, in this review, we're going to limit ourselves to Amazon S3 because this is the, the general, the standard uh, solution. And we are going to create a new account. And just like uh, on the Mac where we have used Arc, we need um, our Amazon access keys, our credentials. And... Um, but first, we're going to start with a display name to label our backup. So we want to make clear that we are backing up now our Windows PC. And um, so we call, we, we choose the display name Windows PC. And then we're going to head for our access keys here. So just log into your Amazon S3 account and copy the credentials uh, out of the web interface. So we have our access key and our secret key and just paste it into the Cloudberry mask you find uh, when creating the your, your new backup account. So and then you have to specify a bucket. You can choose to create a new one or choose an existing one. I've already created here a little bucket called Cloud Backuping. Um, but you can obviously name it however you want and create a new bucket and you can also specify a proxy if you want to go for even more security here and to uh, route your uh, backup process through a proxy server. But we're not going to do that in uh, this review here. But feel free to, to experiment with that if you, if you like and if you feel the need to have an, even another layer of security between your computer and uh, Amazon servers here. So now we've set up everything quite all right, and it is time to hit the next button. And now we can uh, pick a, a plan name. So how do you want to uh, call this backup? And um, I think I'm just going to uh, leave it that way, but obviously you can give it a, a name of your choosing here. And whenever you're ready, you just click on next. So now you can choose whether you want to back up in advanced mode, which enables encryption of your files, which I highly recommend. And also it supports multiple file versions. So whenever you change your files, it stores the previous version of that file that you can go back in time basically. And it does also block level backup. So it detects which portions of the file have changed, making backups and uploads obviously much faster than just having to upload um, or having to upload the whole file over and over again. So uh, I highly recommend using the advanced mode. And the next step is going to be that you will have to choose obviously what files you want to back up. And here I have prepared a, as I always do, a little test folder of one gigabyte in size. I don't want to uh, back up more because I want to speed up the process here a little bit. So um, I just uh, select uh, the folder and now you can choose whether you want to 
really back up everything in that folder or if you want to exclude certain file types. For example, let's say I didn't want to back up movie files so I could exclude .mp4 files, for example, or audio files or whatever you want. Or you can skip entire folders and um, also, another option that is pretty interesting is only backing up files after a specific date that you know, okay, you have already made a backup of other files that were created prior to uh, 15th of March, for example, then you could exclude all those files. And the next step, you can actually select whether you want to compress your files, which is obviously going to speed up the backup process. It compresses your files. And also you can enable encryption. And this is obviously only allowed in advanced mode. And also can you can select the encryption mode that you want to use here. So the AES 128-bit encryption is a pretty secure encryption. And you hardly need more encryption in the normal cases. So you have to choose a password. But... Well, watch out. You never, ever should forget this password because if you do, you cannot um, decrypt your files and you will lose everything that you've backed up. So be very careful not losing that password. And you can also opt to use a reduced redundancy storage, which will increase... Uh, well, which will lower the price you pay on a monthly basis because it doesn't create that much redundant copies of your files. So I will choose that because it's I have multiple backups and just in case the Amazon backup fails, I do have a fallback backup. So I did not choose um, to, active, to, to activate uh, redundant copies of my files. So in the next step, there are the purge options. So when do you want file versions to be deleted from the Amazon service? Because remember, every file version actually adds up to your plan and to your monthly bill. So you will want to uh, select those settings carefully to really adjust it to your uh, budget that you want to spend each month. And also you can choose when you want files to be deleted after you've deleted those files from your PC. And I choose 30 days because this is normally um, a good spectrum of days that I will need to recover those files when I accidentally deleted them from my PC. So in the next step, you will be able to select your schedule. And here we have a variety of options. And for most part, I will always choose the uh, real-time backup because it changes uh, well, it will back up my files whenever I do changes to them, and um, I cannot miss to back up uh, files. So when my computer crashes this second, I have actually a current backup of all my files, and this is something I highly recommend you doing as well. So another interesting feature is the um, the email notification feature. So whenever a backup completes, you can get an email where uh, the actual status is... Um, you're being notified whether the backup has been complete or successful. So this might be useful if you are traveling, for example, and have your uh, computer running um, at home. So you can always uh, be sure that you have the, the most recent backup uh, ready. So um, you can configure that with your SMTP account and your email account. And then you get in the last step a summary where you have a overview of the options that you configured. And then your backup plan is basically successfully created and you can choose to run the backup now. And this is just what we, uh, what we want to do. And you can see that here in the dashboard or the in the backup plans dashboard, you have we have our custom created backup plan. We just uh, have it here figured at the top. And also there are other plans available, like my internet bookmarks that are pre-created by Cloudberry Labs, and also my pictures backup and documents backup that takes the files that are stored in the standard Windows folders and backs them up if you choose to run the backup now. So at the right-hand corner, you see that uh, it is now searching for modified files from our backup plan and it calculates the total file size, which is uh, 3.7 gigabyte, and now starts uploading immediately. So we can see how much time is left, how fast is it actually going to back up our files, and we can see that it's going to take roughly two hours to back up, and we can monitor our upload speed, which is quite a right as Amazon's our servers are pretty fast. So uh, we're going to just stop uh, the, uh, the backup here and return when all the files have been uploaded.
So when all your files have been uploaded to Amazon servers, um, you can now be actually safe that your data is fully backed up. And you can, for example, now choose to restore files when clicking on restore files. And you can choose when if you want to really restore the latest version or whether you want to go back in time and choose the restore from a specific date or whether you want to select um, the restore manually. And it gives you all the uh, the files that we have uh, uploaded and you could select particular files that you want to restore if you for example working on an important project and your computer just crashed and you need a specific file as fast as possible because the deadline is due in one hour so you could now go in and restore only that file to a specific location for example on your external hard drive and then continue working on that file as you please and obviously please your boss us as well. So you just have to select uh, a folder. Let's do that quickly. And we can go ahead and create a new folder here. Let's call that restore and click on next. So obviously you need your decrypt, uh, your, your password to decrypt your data that you've chosen before, because without the password, you will only see file gibberish. And uh, that's actually a good thing, not a bad thing. So uh, make sure you uh, remember your password always and click on next. So we see that backup and restoring your files does not actually have to be a pain in the butt. Actually, Cloudberry Labs have done a great job of um, making the interface as clear as possible. And I think with the wizard, um, anybody can do backups and there's no excuse to not do your backup. And the good thing is here, you do not have to commit to an online backup service when you don't feel comfortable with that. You just choose Amazon and you really have maximum control with your data. Probably this is not the best solution for, for everybody because somebody uh, might just be better suited with a service like Backblaze where you just hit one button and then it backs up everything to their servers and it is a great service but if you want to have more control over your files over scheduling your backup and actually geeking around a little bit with the options then cloudberry backup is actually a good solution to back up your files to amazon servers or, or other uh, services that are actually supported by cloudberry backup so i really hope i could um show you how you can use cloudberry backup and help you getting uh, the, your backups a little bit better sorted and uh, if I could help you, please uh, leave a comment or even better, a uh, link to the site so that more people can find out about it. My name is Mauricio Prinslau for cloudbackuping.com, signing off.